Okay, today's focus is lab reports and what they mean exactly. So whether you're inpatient or outpatient in the clinic, in the ER, or sitting in a hospital bed, every time you see the doctor, they will most likely run something called a CBC, which stands for complete blood count, with something called a retic profile. So a CBC plus retic. Remember, retic is short for reticulocyte, which stands for those baby red blood cells that everybody cares about because they help us know what exactly is going on, how long uh, your sickle cells are living, how well your bone marrow is uh, keeping up with the production, and what exactly is going on inside your body. So we're just going to give a brief overview using Sophia's uh, lab results from a couple of days ago. So the first thing you'll see, and sometimes they come in a different order, but for this one I've highlighted the most important things on here for sickle cell disease. So that first thing you see highlighted right here, it says white blood count. And your white blood cells are your army that help fight off an infection. So in each one of these, they have a range of what's normal. And so if you see right here, the range says 5.7 to 10.5, and then it has the status F, which means flagged, because Sophia's white count is actually a little bit high. Now on this, it's slightly high, nothing worth noting, but when you have a very serious infection, your white blood cell count will go up. You'll need a bigger army to fight off that infection, and so naturally your body will make more white blood cells to help fight that infection off. So paying attention to your white count can help you understand whether or not you have an infection. The next one that's highlighted on here says hemoglobin. Now Sophia's was 8.5. They give a range, which is an average of where healthy hemoglobin should be about 11 to 13.4. We have another F, which means flagged because on this one it's actually low, which is what we would expect in the world of sickle cell. So although there's a range of what is normal, every person with sickle cell has their own what they call baseline hemoglobin, which Sophia's is about 8.5. Um, it's all always below that average of healthy hemoglobin because remember people with sickle cell are anemic. So the next one is called the hematocrit. Now the hematocrit and the hemoglobin are closely connected and people often use those two numbers interchangeably to talk about anemia. So the rule of thumb is roughly three times the hemoglobin will give you the hematocrit. In sickle cell, we always talk about the hemoglobin level and not the hematocrit, although uh, doctors and other people that uh, you might encounter that aren't directly related to sickle cell might ask you what your hematocrit is. So if you um, times your hemoglobin by three, you will roughly get um, your hematocrit. It might be a little bit high on that. The next one on here is your platelet count. These are actually... Um, hundreds of thousands. So this one says 550, the basic range being 150 to 500, also flagged because it's high. Now, some people's um, platelets will be high if you've had your spleen removed. Sophia has had her spleen out, so we expect that her platelet count, which are those cells that patch up holes or damages in your blood vessels, we expect that hers will always be a little bit high because she doesn't have her spleen, which helps out in that area. So I'm going to flip over the page. And there is our reticulocyte count right there. So this is sometimes reported as a percentage and sometimes reported as a number. Typically in children, you'll see it as a percent. So the average range, remember I told you, um, the ranges are over here. Most everybody is below 1%. However, if you've been sick, it might go up a little bit. The range here says 0.56 to 2.72. And Sophia's is almost 17% because during this time she was actually um, having a pain crisis. So her reticulocyte count was going up because her cell, her sickle cells were dying quicker. Um, there is a huge range for people with sickle cell and some people operate at a much higher reticulocyte count up in the 30s and 40s because they uh, sickle much more frequently or ongoing. Check us out on the web at hopeforscd.org. Post any questions or comments below and stay tuned as we continue our journey. Thanks.